Hi guys, Ian O'Regan here and welcome to the next in my new series of instruction videos where I'm showing you how to play some of my favourite cover songs from my live solo set. Now not all of the songs in this series are songs where the original is played on an acoustic guitar. Where the original is on an acoustic guitar, I'll do my best to give you as accurate as possible a version of the original. And where the original was something else, like in this case, I'll try to show you a way to play it that'll be credible on the acoustic guitar and that you can take as is or you can take away and develop for your own playing style. Before I get into this one though, if you like these videos and find them useful, please do subscribe and hit the bell below somewhere so that YouTube can tell you when I post more of them in future. Today I'll be showing you how to play Lyle Lovett's She's No Lady, She's My Wife. The song is more than 30 years old now, but it was cool then and it's still cool now. The only thing that probably isn't cool is a middle-aged YouTuber saying things like cool. Uh, anyway, let's zoom in and take a closer look. Song is played in standard tuning, so E, A, D, G, B, and E, and it's in the key of G major. Now I play this song, when I'm playing it I use a capo on the second fret, that's just to suit the pitch of my voice, you'll see that on the instruction video uh, that I've put a link to in the description below if you want to see how I play it. Uh, but I'm showing it to you without the capo, so that you can play it in whatever key you like. I'm playing a G with a bar chord throughout. Now some of them you can switch to a G with a normal open string tuning, sorry, open string fingering. But I would be inclined to prefer to play it as a bar chord wherever you can, and you'll see why when I get uh, into some of the chord changes that you have to be able to do. I'll play through the first line. That's the first line and it's repeated. The first chord is a G. Play that for two beats. Then the second chord on the third beat is a B minor seven flat five. So you've got your first finger on the fifth string on the second fret. You have your second finger on the third string, second fret. Your third finger goes into the fourth string on the third fret. And your little finger is the second string on the fourth fret. And I'm leaning my little finger against that first string to dampen it, to make sure that it doesn't sound when you play the chord. Now that's a tricky chord if you're not used to it. Uh, the easiest way I find to think about it would be this is a D major chord. You'll probably have learned that as one of the first three chords that you learned how to play. So if you take exactly that shape and move it up two strings onto the fifth string, then you've already got that shape in there and then you just drop your little finger in on the second string underneath it. It's probably the easiest way to visualize that. You already know how to play most of the chord. Otherwise, if you view it as a whole new chord, you might find that your fingers are all over the place and separated and it's not a natural shape to do. But you've already practiced that. So play that and drop your little finger in. Easiest way to think about it. Then practice that change from the G to the B minor seven flat five, G. Use a metronome, play one beat, maybe two beats of each chord, and then speed the metronome up so that over time you're able to move easily and smoothly between the two. Okay, so we've played one, two, three, then the fourth beat I'm just taking that whole shape and moving it back one fret to the B flat minor seven flat five. Then the next chord on the first beat of the next bar is an A minor seven. So index finger goes on the second string first fret second finger on the fourth string, second fret, and you leave the third string open. And then the next chord, the last chord in the line, is the Jimi Hendrix chord, which, if I get this right, it is a D7 with a sharp nine. Uh, so you've got your second finger on the fifth string on the fifth fret. Your index finger is on the fourth string, fourth fret and then your third finger goes on the third string on the fifth fret. It's a D7 triad. And then you add your little finger on the second string on the 
sixth fret. And again, lean it against the first string so that it doesn't sound. So very slowly that line goes. One, two, three, four. And it's repeated. And then the third time round, hold on to the G for one extra beat. One, two, three, four. And then the next chord on the first beat of the next bar is a B flat minor seven. So bar the first fret, and then play your second finger on the second string, second fret your third finger on the fourth string, third fret. It's like the A minor seven that you just played earlier, but moved up one fret with the bar on the first fret. So play that, and then back to the A minor seven. And the timing is one, two, three, four, one, two, and. One, two, three, four, one, two, and. Then a G7. And here's why you want to be playing the bar chord on the G the whole way through, because the next chord is a G sharp 7. So just move everything up one fret so that you're barring the fourth fret. And then back to the G7. And then the D7 sharp 9. So I'll play that whole line slowly. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and. And that's the first verse. Second verse is exactly the same until you get to the last part where you're playing the G7, G sharp seven, and instead of going to the the D seven sharp nine, you're playing G seven, G sharp seven, G seven. And then for the last two beats in the bar, I'm just adding my third finger here on the second string on the sixth fret, just to give it a bit more definition. Don't need to do that, just adds a little bit of extra color. And we're into the chorus. So the chorus. Starts with a C9 chord, beautiful chord. It's like the D7 sharp 9 that we played earlier on, but you start with the second finger on the fifth string third fret. Your first finger goes on the fourth string second fret. Third finger then bars the first three strings on the third fret. That's a tricky one for your knuckle to get used to if you're not used to it but well worth the effort because that is just a lovely chord and you will use it a lot as you play the guitar. So we play that C9 chord for two full bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we go back to the G7, G sharp seven, G7. And then for the last two beats of that bar, I add the little finger onto the second string. And sometimes I might do just to give it a little bit of definition. You don't need to do that. So you could play two. Or you could just play and just play the G7. Then back to the C9 again for another two bars. Then we get to an A minor seven. Now I'm playing the A minor seven with the second and third fingers for a reason because you're moving then to a B flat minor seven. So you just have to move those two string, those two fingers up one fret, back to the A minor seven, and then the D seven sharp nine. So again, I'll play that whole thing nice and slow. So two bars on the C nine. One, two, three, four, one, two. Then go to the G seven, G sharp seven, G seven. C9 for two bars, then A minor seven, B flat minor seven, A minor seven, D sharp nine. 
So a fair amount of movement at the last line. But you'll get used to that again. Well worth the effort to put in to get that sounding smooth and swingy and flowing. And then you're back into the third verse, which is exactly the same as the second verse. And everything else is exactly the same the whole way through. And the only thing then that I need to show you will be the ending. So the song ends at the end of a verse rather than at the end of a chorus. <clears throat> and I'll sing through it and I'll show you what I'm doing. She hates my mama. She hates my daddy too. She loves to tell me how much she hates the things I do. She loves to lie beside me almost every night. And here's where it changes. Well, she's no lady, she's my wife. Well, she's no lady, she's my wife. Okay, so we've got to the G7, G sharp 7, and back to the G, and then sort of losing the swing tempo, you're playing a little bit sort of out of tempo here. I just, I just play a G7, then add the sixth and the seventh note on the little finger. So I'm playing the little finger on the fifth fret on the second string, then the sixth fret on the second string, and then I play quickly a D9, which is exactly the same as the C9 we've been playing before, but played on the fifth fret instead, and then slide it back to the C9. So I've played. And then up to the D7 with a sharp nine. And then finish on a G6 chord, which is G7. And add your second, your little finger on the second string on the fifth fret. Okay, so you've played, she's no lady, she's my wife. Well, she's no lady, she's my why? Lovely little jazz chord to finish. So that's the whole song. I hope I've given you enough to be able to play it through and to start making your own. Have a look at the performance video that I've done. There's a link in the description below and see whether you can start to add some extra passing notes here and there, some rhythmic flourishes of your own to make it your own performance. If there's any songs that you'd like me to do in one of these tutorial videos, please do let me know in the comments below and I'll be delighted to see what I can do for you. In the meantime, have fun with this one and I'll see you next time.